With the NEC form of contract, one of the things that it's added that other contracts don't have is a schedule of cost components. Um, the schedule of cost components is a bit of a mystery to quite a few people, particularly when they're new to the NEC, and will say it's overly complicated. Why can't we just use industry standard rates? How, how would you answer that comment or criticism, Ian? Well, I think you've got to look at the purpose behind the schedule of cost components. It's there when we're looking to price compensation events and change, but also to reimburse contractors under options C, D and E. So it has to have a level of complexity within that when it's being used as a reimbursement method. There is a shorter schedule that can be used under options A and B for agreeing compensation events, which is a simplified version, albeit there's still a lot of components within that. So for me, I think it's a beneficial thing because it gives a good guidance around what costs can be claimed as opposed to what costs are covered by the fee. And without that, you revert back to more standard contract definitions of cost. And what does that mean? And that, for me, creates more debate when you have a single word of cost compared to a schedule of cost components that breaks that down into a series of, for me, pretty recognisable elements of work. John, take, taking that sort of point on a step, if you're going to have a schedule of cost components that breaks things down, you obviously need to get the, the project team aligned as to what each of the small bite-sized pieces mean, otherwise you've turned one big dispute into a series of little problems which just might actually escalate the issue. How, how do you get the project manager to understand the schedule of cost components in the same way as the contractor and the employer to be informed? Well, mate, let's be more precise. You get the, the QS who acts for the project manager and likewise the QS for the contractor uh, to, to understand it and how the, and the tenderers, the estimator as well, who puts together the financial submission, uh, you, get, you need to educate them uh, on the nuances of it. Uh, uh, but having said that, there are a few areas which are, uh, cause discussion regardless of when you're educated on it. Um, I think one of the things that you, to, to get over the reason why is, believe it or not, someone did a PhD and they found that under JCT, the biggest cause of dispute in the construction industry was assessing the quantum of claims. Who'd have thought? Amazing research. Um, uh, and I remember doing a training where someone said, if the NEC is so collaborative, how come it's got all these clauses on compensation events and the schedule of cost components? Shouldn't people just agree? Well, the thing is, that it's all, if it's just cost, a fair cost, it's highly subjective. So there is more learning under the NEC that people have to do, but hopefully both parties having done that learning, then there's a lot less subjectivity. But that's not to say you might have lots of little arguments rather than one big argument. I think one of the, the helpful things about the schedule of cost components is we've moved on from the days of arguing about adjusting rates in the bill of quantities and how contractors arguably used to uh, adjust their tenders and uh, underprice certain, or put in keen rates, shall we say, on certain items and higher rates on, on others. Uh, and we now are divorced from that and we look at the schedule of cost components, that is the value uh, that, uh, and the rates that should be used. And that, I think that's a helpful uh, progression in support of the schedule of cost components. Ian, you picked up that there's, there's two different schedules of cost components. There, there's the full one, which is just called the schedule, and then there's the shorter schedule of cost. Why, why differentiate between the two if they're essentially the same thing trying to achieve the same end? Well, I think it's the purpose they're being used for. The full schedule is used to both assess compensation events and to make payments under options C, D and E, whereas the shorter schedule is primarily there for A and B, though you can use it in C, D, E as well. And it's there for when you agree in compensation events only, and therefore it can be a more simplistic, a slightly shortened version of the schedule. The idea being it's, it's easier, it's hopefully quicker, to, simpler to try and agree compensation events using that schedule rather than the full schedule. So that's the intent behind them. When you look at taking that schedule of cost components down through the contract chain, do you think there's, a, there's the same level of understanding of how it operates at tier one subcontractors, tier twos, tier threes, all the way down to the suppliers, so they really understand the purpose that the schedule is, is trying to achieve, and actually it feeds back through that chain appropriately, John? I would say no, there isn't that understanding, but there, while understanding would be useful, there doesn't necessarily need to be that level of understanding because you can actually agree to use rates and lump sums as the basis for evaluation of a compensation. So if a subcontractor who is, shall we say, under the short contract, 
has tendered rates. They don't have any site establishment. Those rates correspond pretty much to what their costs are for doing extra work. Where you just say, instead of going to the subcontractor and saying, give us your hourly rate, and they say, I'll give you my hourly rate, um, et cetera, that sort of stuff. They, you just go, well, that, that's what they, they tendered as a main contractor to the, the project manager's QS. Are you happy with that? Because that's what we're going to get charged. Yes. That's a good shortcut. Nothing wrong with it. Workmanship works. So I don't think there needs to be the same level of understanding as you go down. Okay, so summarising that conversation, I think the, the schedule of cost components is a step forward in the industry. It's adding additional detail and additional opportunity to engage in a more meaningful conversation about what cost really is and what it looks like in a way that everyone can understand or begin to grapple with properly. Um, however, it's only the beginning of the discussion um, and you still need to continue that into even more detail to ensure that everyone's properly aligned and talking about the same thing. Whether you need to have that conversation down the supply chain, I guess depends on how sophisticated your supply chain is and how much of an input that supply chain is having into the overall project. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.